Lee Van Cleef was an iconic movie star who captivated audiences with his sharp looks, intense gaze, and intimidating voice. This legendary star of the Spaghetti Western always brought a unique perspective to every role and always had a commanding presence on screen. However, there was more to him than his rugged appearance. He lived a life filled with intrigue and a reputation that has been the topic of many rumors and theories for years. Now, after over 30 years since he died, his son has finally revealed what we all suspected. This secret promises to change the narrative of this legendary actor's life and work. Join us as we unravel this shocking revelation about the iconic movie star and the untold stories of his journey. Lee Van Cleef's early life was a far cry from the Wild Western characters he later portrayed on screen. Lee Van Cleef was born on the 9th of January 1925 in Somerville, New Jersey, to Marion Lavinia and Clarence Leroy Van Cleef Sr. His father and mother were both of Dutch origin. His father worked as a pharmacist while his mother was a professional concert pianist. Van Cleef left high school early and attained high school graduation at the age of 17 from Somerville High School, New Jersey. He joined the United States Navy after he had completed his education in September 1942. After his training was over, Van Cleef was deployed to a submarine chaser and then to a minesweeper named USS Incredible, where he served as a sonarman. The ship first served in the Caribbean and in the Mediterranean, where it took part in the landings in the south of France. In January 1945, the USS Incredible transferred to the Black Sea, where it undertook sweeping duties from the Soviet naval base at Sevastopol, Crimea. Subsequently, the ship was involved in air-sea search and rescue operations in the Black Sea and later relocated to Palermo, Sicily. By the time of his discharge, he had been promoted to Sonarman First Class, So One, and had earned himself his minesweeper patch. He had also been awarded the Bronze Star and Good Conduct Medal. Due to his deployments, Van Cleef was also eligible to receive medals such as the European African Middle Eastern Campaign Medal, the Asiatic Pacific Campaign Medal, the American Campaign Medal, and the World War II Victory Medal. However, he was released from the Navy service in 1946. Van Cleef was active as a film actor for over 30 years. He gained fame in the subgenre of the spaghetti western movies where he typically played a sinister outlaw with penetrating looks. Lee Van Cleef started his acting in the early 1950s, appearing in minor roles in movies and television series for several years. Upon his departure from the Navy, Lee Van Cleef went back home to live with his wife, Patsy, in the Brown Street Apartments in Somerville. A co-worker encouraged him to audition for the Clinton Music Hall Players production of a play titled Our Town. Van Cleef's first acting role came as a reader for the play Our Town in the little theater group that was in Clinton, New Jersey. From there, he continued to meet the group and audition for roles. The next biggest part he got was that of the boxer Joe Pendleton in the play Heaven Can Wait. At this time, talent scouts who came to observe the show were amazed by Van Cleef's acting on stage and his diction skills. One of these scouts named Maynard Morris later took him to New York City. In New York, talent agent Maynard Morris of the MCA agency took him to the Alvin Theater for an audition. The audition was for a play called Mr. Roberts. When asked about this New York audition, Lee remarked, the director told me to take off my jacket, then my shirt, and then my pants. He then asked me to walk around the area. Despite the fact that there was a lady sitting beside him, Lee obeyed the instructions. That is exactly what they were looking for, and the strapping, muscular young man got the part. Van Cleef attracted the attention of film producer Stanley Kramer when he was performing in Mr. Roberts in Los Angeles. Kramer decided to cast Van Cleef in his movie High Noon in 1952, although it was a non-speaking role and he was typecast as a villain. First, Kramer invited Van Cleef to portray Harvey Pell, an aspiring and resentful deputy who quits the marshal. However, there was one hitch. Kramer insisted that Van Cleef change his appearance via surgery in order to portray a less menacing character. Van Cleef turned this down, and he was finally cast for the role of nameless outlaw with the screen name of Jack Colby. 
While his role was important in this film, Van Cleef was essentially featured only as a supporting character with no lines of dialogue. His looks alone made the audience know that he is the bad guy, and this is depicted in the opening scenes of the movie. He was always a man who had that kind of face that could speak for him more than what his lines could say. In the last scenes of High Noon, his character is shot dead by the hero in a shootout. That was usually the fate of the characters Van Cleef portrayed. This particular film brought him much recognition and set the stage for his entry into Hollywood. However, his memorable performance in Sergio Leone's famous The Good, The Bad and The Ugly in the year 1966. This iconic movie where he portrays the villainous Angel Eyes can undoubtedly be regarded as the role that established Van Cleef as one of the most iconic figures in the spaghetti western subgenre. The film The Good, The Bad and The Ugly is widely regarded as one of the best cult films of all time. Three men fight to get to an area where there is a large amount of money hidden. Clint Eastwood is the good. Lee Van Cleef is, of course, the bad. And Eli Wallach is the ugly. Not surprisingly, Lee Van Cleef is killed at the end being outdrawn by Clint Eastwood in a gunfight. The film has an incredible, unique, well-known soundtrack. The director recorded close shots and long shots, something that could not have been done by other directors in that period. Possibly one of the most iconic aspects of Van Cleef's career, Angel Eyes, is considered as one of the greatest villains in movie history. A lot of people always wondered what Spaghetti Western means and why such a weird name. The Spaghetti Western is a wide subgenre of Western movies originating from Europe. It started appearing in the mid-1960s after the appearance of Sergio Leone's style in filmmaking and international box office returns. This term was used by foreign critics since most of these westerns were made and directed by Italians. Leone's films and other basic examples of spaghetti westerns are frequently characterized as having abandoned, vilified, or deconstructed many of the innovational features of traditional U.S. westerns. This was partly done deliberately and partly due to the setting of a different culture. In an interview with spaghetti western actor Aldo Sambrell, who starred in many films under director Sergio Leone, he noted that the term spaghetti western was coined by a Spanish journalist by the name Alfonso Sanchez in reference to the Italian food spaghetti. A majority of the spaghetti western films were produced by the Italians and Spanish, and sometimes French, West German, British, Portuguese, Greek, Israeli, Yugoslav, and Americans. As it was stated, European westerns were produced during the period of 1960 to 1978, and there were more than 600 films made in this subgenre. Some of these were made in Italian or dubbed in Italian. However, the majority of the films included international casts and sounds were often post-synced. Therefore, most of the films do not possess an official language. The spaghetti western movie, The Good, The Bad and The Ugly, was shot in several languages. Most of the actors used their natural language when performing in front of the cameras. For the dialogues, Clint Eastwood, Lee Van Cleef, and Eli Wallach spoke English. But given that it was an Italian production, the film was first made in Italian. The English dialogue was synchronized in Italian for this version. In other countries, the film was released with original English dialogue and the original voices of the actors. For supporting characters, the dialogue was recorded in other languages based on the audience in particular countries. When the film was first released back in 1966, almost all critics shared mostly negative things to say about it. Some considered it as being too lengthy, excessively violent, and cynical. However, despite receiving negative critiques from many viewers, the film was financially successful. At the international level, it generated over $38 million in box office sales. As the years passed, people came to acknowledge the film and its existence. The film has a striking style, unforgettable music, and iconic characters that make it popular. The movie now ranks among the greatest movies of the spaghetti western subgenre. After the success of The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, Van Cleef featured in many more Western movies such as For a Few Dollars More, which was directed by Sergio Leone, and Death Rides a Horse. 
He also featured in other genres, including crime and action categories. Through his appearance in Leone's movies, Van Cleef became one of the most prominent actors in the Spaghetti Western. He played the characters of the central and often surprisingly heroic roles in some films such as The Big Gun Down, Death Rides a Horse, Day of Anger, and The Grand Duel. In the year 1958, Van Cleef was in a very bad car accident and he had no option but to stop acting for some time. He was involved in a serious car accident on his way back home from a shooting location in Lone Pine, California. The collision in question caused two fractures to his left arm and a broken kneecap. The injuries were so severe that surgeons were in doubt whether he would ever walk without a limp or ride a horse again, both of which were critical for his roles in the Westerns. It took a long time and considerable effort for Van Cleef to recover from his injuries. He was hospitalized for a month after which he underwent intensive physical therapy. Despite the physical suffering and the lack of a positive outlook, he was determined to recover from his injuries in order to continue acting. In a twist of events that no one expected, six months after the accident, Van Cleef was back on a horse. Regardless of the chronic pain in his knee and limited mobility after the injury, his dedication to his craft never faded away. He persisted in doing his own stunts on the move and always altered his performances to suit the physical challenges that he faced. Despite these physical issues, Van Cleef also dealt with alcohol dependency. He disclosed that due to the increased pressure as a celebrity and the pain from his injuries, he resorted to alcohol use. It took several years for his career to bounce back after this setback, and unlike most of his major works in his early years, he just had small roles for some years. Moving forward, he acted as one of Lee Marvin's notorious henchmen in the 1962 film The Man Who Shot Liberty Valance, directed by John Ford, starring James Stewart and John Wayne. He also appeared as one of the river pirates in an uncredited scene in the Western epic How the West Was Won in 1962. Later on, Van Cleef starred in a supporting role in John Carpenter's cult classic movie called Escape from New York in 1981. In 1984, he was given the role of a ninja master in the NBC adventure television production known as The Master, which was however pulled off after 13 episodes. The actor also influenced television and acted in several television shows during his active years. Some of his popular works include The Range Rider, Sky King, The Man Behind the Badge, Zorro, Wanted. There are four westerns, namely Dead or Alive, Gunsmoke, Branded, and The Hard Road. He acted in four episodes of ABC's The Rifleman, starring Chuck Connors between 1959 and 1962, and twice in ABC's Tombstone Territory. In 1958, he portrayed the role of Deputy Sid Carver in the episode The Great Stagecoach Robbery of another syndicated Western series titled Frontier Doctor, which starred Rex Allen. Van Cleef was a guest star in the ABC sitcom The Real McCoys in the 1960s, acting as a sentry in one episode which featured Walter Brennan. Young Van Cleef was also featured in an episode of The Andy Griffith Show, also as Frank Diamond in The Untouchables. Over the long span of his acting career, Van Cleef got 90 movie roles and 109 television appearances in 38 years. His net worth was estimated to be at $2 million at the time of his demise in 1989. For an actor like Lee Van Cleef, one would not be wrong to say that he has a rich portfolio given that his acting career span for over three decades. Hence, it is not a surprise that the net worth of the actor has been estimated to be $2 million. He accumulated his wealth from his movies, television series, and other endeavors. There are many discussions about the relationships Van Cleef had throughout his life. He was married three times and was blessed with four children. He also had good relationships with Clint Eastwood and Charles Bronson, who are arguably two of the greatest actors in the history of Hollywood cinema. All three actors have known each other since the time of the filming of For a Few Dollars More in 1965. They immediately became good friends because of their interest in Western and action movies. The first wife of Van Cleef was Patsy Ruth Cale. They got married in 1943 and they had three children in their marriage. 
two sons named Alan and David, and a daughter named Deborah. They were married for 15 years before they got a divorce in 1958. Van Cleef got married for the second time to Joan Marjorie Drain in 1960. This period coincided with his growing success in the genre of spaghetti westerns. They were blessed with a daughter who was named Denise. Like any good partner, they complemented each other. Joan gave stability and support to Van Cleef during the pressures of early Hollywood stardom. Their marriage lasted until 1974, when they both decided to part ways. Joan used to follow Van Cleef on film shoots, and the two decided to stand by each other in everything they did. Van Cleef once shared part of their romance, saying, Joan and I had an understanding from the start. For instance, if she was on a concert tour, I would accompany her. If I was filming, she would accompany me. We ensured that we valued each other's privacy, but at the same time we were always available for each other. Although they were happy initially, the toll from Van Cleef's strict work schedule and conflict over their personal and marital roles led to their divorce in 1974. Fortunately, Lee Van Cleef got married again in 1976 to Barbara Havilone. This was perhaps his most steady and long-term relationship. Barbara stayed with him till his death in 1989. Barbara was an excellent wife and a loving companion who fully appreciated his work and also enjoyed art. Barbara also brought stability to Van Cleef's life after marriage, especially when he was encountering health problems in his later years. Van Cleef evidently cherished his wife and children as he always found time for his family amidst his straining work commitments. He often went to Somerville, his hometown, to look after his sickly mother who was also his lone parent. Everyone knew him personally, and it felt like he was still that humble guy next door who never lost himself in the fame. Van Cleef also had interaction with his children, which was among the most critical points of his life. The actor, who portrayed a rather tough persona in movies, was said to have been warm, friendly, and soft-spoken in real life. Van Cleef was also an artist, and he used to practice painting as a hobby when he was not working. He painted until his death, and much of his work depicted landscapes and western scenes. Van Cleef's son finally shared a secret that most of us had always presumed about Lee Van Cleef, his addiction to heavy smoking. While Van Cleef's persona might have been perfect for a bandit or a mercenary, what the audience did not know was that he battled a weakness that plagued him throughout his life. The majority of his characters were depicted as smokers, and few people could guess that the actor had a serious tobacco dependence problem. His smoking habit was so severe that he would use cigars during shootings and even when the cameras were not on. Ironically, while he appeared to be a tough man, he was extremely conscious of the dangers associated with the smoking habit, but was unable to abandon it. His addiction had taken a heavy toll on his health, and he was diagnosed with chronic bronchitis and emphysema in his last years. Lee Van Cleef, who went through suffering for many years, passed away at 64 on the 16th of December in 1989. Van Cleef suffered from heart disease since the 1970s and received a pacemaker in the 1980s, but he continued to make films until his death. He died at his home in Oxnard, California, due to a heart attack. Throat cancer was listed as a secondary cause of death. This was much due to his lifetime smoking habits that had been destructive to his health. He was a victim of chronic bronchitis and empyema because of his exposure to tobacco smoke. He was laid to rest at Forest Lawn Memorial Park Cemetery in Hollywood Hills, California. And on his tomb is an inscription that reads, Best of the Bad, which was probably attributed to the numerous acting performances he had as a villain. His demise was a big blow to Western genre lovers and left a huge gap in the film industry. He will always be remembered for the roles he played and for his fight against illnesses. Though faced with many difficulties, he persisted and actively engaged in filmmaking up until his final days. His perseverance made him a role model to many not just in Hollywood but in society.